Okay, this question is from Mr. Inconsequential. The title of the question is how to unlock myself. What I'm hearing, what I'm reading is that you, you're, you're overanalyzing your, um, and you're overthinking when you get on the field, this is leading you to make poor decisions, right? You, you, you want to be, um, you, you want to, uh, be more relaxed and have more fun playing and maybe not think so much. Um, my little brother had a golf instructor in high school. He's someone who you would look at and say, this person does not know how to play golf, right? Um, he just didn't fit the stereotype of what uh, you might expect from a golf, from a golf swinging instructor. Um, but he said that during, when you're hitting, when you're out practicing, you know, if you're doing practice runs or you're on the, on the, at the driving range, you know, maybe you're mindful of, maybe keeping your elbows together or weight transfer or, you know, he cue my little brother in on a, ver a variety of things. But then he asked, you know, my little brother said he's with a few of his buddies and he asked him, he went up to a, a golfer and he said, what do you think about when, when you're, when you're going, when you're playing? And then this kid said, you're thinking about this and you're thinking about that. And he's like, he, he either said, no, that's not right. Or he asked someone else, what are you thinking about when you're, when you're playing? And he gave a response and supposedly the answer he was looking for is nothing. You should be thinking about nothing. And it's, you know, you say, okay, how, how do I think about nothing? Um, I would say the fastest way to think about nothing is to get out of your head and into your feet. So rhythmic juggling, rhythmic juggling, using an RMT rope or using a kick trainer are all great tools that will allow you to unlock your potential and unlock yourself, right? Because, because, um, why are they great tools? Because, right, they say that Tony Robbins says, if, if, you, if your mind's not feeling good, you gotta move the body, right? And that's such simple advice, right? Uh, move the body, right? Juggling, um, kind of losing yourself in the ball, right? It's almost like you, you wanna start to cultivate the ability to take a deep breath and in one breath, like find deep, deep tranquility and deep relaxation in kin. And if you could do that in one breath, I think checking out the TED Talk, How to Breathe by Dr. Vranich comes to mind. Um, you know, I, you think as an athlete, you, you know, you're, you know, you think you know how to breathe. And I just, I just didn't, you know, I was a horizontal breather. And what I had to learn was how to, how to breathe. I'm sorry, I was a vertical breather, right? I was using my upper back and my shoulders to breathe. And what I didn't know was how to use my belly, right? Starting to breathe horizontally. So, you, you know, I, I've been encouraging I mean, if you've never been technically shown how to breathe, the chances that you can, that you're breathing effectively or belly breathing um, is slim to none, right? I, and I, I bet anyone, everyone listening to this, I'm 96% sure that you're not breathing right. And the way you check is take a deep breath. And if any part of your upper back, your, your traps, right, your shoulders, if there's any vertical movement, right, if your shoulders raised, if your upper back raised, you are you could be breathing better, right? So you want to check out that TED Talk, How to Breathe with, doc, with Dr. Vranich. Another TED Talk that comes to mind is by Amy Cuddy. I've been doing this for the past 10 plus years. I used to do this before my econ exam, right? I had three econ exams my senior year of college. And if I didn't pass one, I didn't pass, I didn't graduate. And if I didn't graduate, I joked that Right, my parents would have fed me to the fishes, right? They would have killed me. So um, le learning how to power pose is super helpful in any high pressure situation, in any, um, if you're about to go into an interview, uh, if you're about to take a PK, a PK, I've started doing this, right? Taking a penalty kick, corner kicks, set pieces, 
Um, you know, you say, okay, well, Andrew, how, how much will this help? You know, it's the, the fact that I found very compelling from the TED Talk was that people who were born blind, who had never seen um, anything at all after they won competitive games would naturally throw their hands up into the air, right, like this in celebration. And I thought, wow, like if that's a genetic, right, like that's deeply, that's deeply wired into who, who we are as, as primates, right, as humans, whatever. Um, so I found this to be so subtle, so subtly powerful. I do this before heavy, heavy lifts in the gym. Um, I do this before taking cold showers, during cold showers. So it's very present in my life. This is not something I, I'm speaking about lightly, right? I'm not just speaking about it and, and not doing it. I, I spend, you know, I'm also spend time hanging which is also like a power pose. So in a given day, I spend about 10 minutes in a power pose at least. So you could call it in a year, I'm spending more than th right th three, six, five times t 10 minutes a day. What is that? I don't know, you know, a, a couple of days, couple of days in a power pose. So, you know, this is how much I believe in it. Whether or not you, you know, you find benefit, you gotta test this out, right? Don't take everything. I say is truth. Um, you got to test it out and experiment, run experiments for yourself. Um, how do you how do you unlock yourself? Uh, five right, five pillars. Andrew Huberman he talks about five pillars. What are the five pillars? The five pillars are sunlight, hydration, and nutrients, movement, sleep, and relationship with yourself and the relationship with others. I would say the way you speak to yourself is more important than the way you speak to others because usually the way we speak to ourselves will reflect how we speak to others, right? And it also goes back to how you're raised, maybe friend groups, peer groups, the way they speak to themselves, right? The way your friends speak to yourselves, jargon, um, mindsets, views. Um, so you want to be encouraging with yourself, right? Jordan Peterson says you, you got to treat yourself as if you're responsible for taking care of yourself, right? So in every sense of that statement, you got to you got to um, invest in yourself for your life. And if you're just, you know, constantly criticizing yourself, if you're constantly uh, trying to beat yourself up, either physically, physically, mentally um, for regrets or past mistakes or, you know, problems, um, you're never going to live to your true potential because you're bogged down on the past. So, you know, Jordan Peterson says, you know, if you have painful memories of the past, you want to write those down, write those down. And then, right, if any memories still make you cry, you got to write those down and then let let it go because um, then you can't, you can't grow. You can't grow if you're thinking about yesterday all the time. Um, I think Homer Simpson says, you can beat yourself up for one day, and then after that, no more. Um, okay, so where are we going? Five, the five pillars, right? So we have relationship, hydration, sunlight, movement, and sleep. So how do the, all these tie into an effective, right? T Andrew, tell me something. Give me something I could sink my teeth into. Well, the most effective way to start in, in increasing your energy and your creativity and unlocking your potential is great sleep. Everyone always talks about great sleep, but no one, no one says how to invest in that. What, what can I do for great sleep? Well, I'm sitting in a hot freaking bathtub right now. Um, I've been trying this for the past two weeks and some weird things have been happening to my body. Um, I started right before I started hot baths before bed, I could remember moments, moments or, you know, a minute or two of a dream. After I started doing hot baths, my dreams, I could literally, like, I could remember hours, hours worth of dreams. Um, I've noticed, like, call me a liar, I've noticed the, the color of my eyes has become more vivid. Um, and this could be a self-fulfilling prophecy or, you know, this could be a, um, a delusion. This could be a confirmation bias, whereas, 
Andrew Huberman says it's going to help you, you know, grow your life. And I try it and I, you know, I believe it. So I try it and I think it happens. So, you know, is this bullshit? I, I don't know. I don't know. I know that repu after I get out of the hot bath or hot shower, my blood vessels, like, look at my freaking, like, my blood vessels from sitting in this hot tub. Like, I'm getting some, some uh, vasodilation, right? I'm getting, like... My, I don't know if you could see that, like my freaking blood vessels start popping out everywhere. Um, but I think the, the, the thing that to me is the most significant is the fact that I can remember lengths, lengths of dreams. And I'll notice, I notice that if I have drink a little bit of alcohol, right? I work at a bar. If I, if I drink a little bit of alcohol, right? It hurts, it hurts my sleep, right? I get, I wake up, I wake up. Uh, unusually early, uh, my energy is lower. So for all those reasons, having um, more vivid and I feel like I'm getting deeper sleep. You know, I'm not using an aura ring. I'm not using any devices, but my gut feels like I've been sleeping better. Um, but, you know, it also ties into other things that encourages, right? So so if you're listening to this, the one, the one thing that you could do is take a hot bath or a hot shower right before bed. Boom. Better sleep in theory, right? Let's say, let's say, let's say, let's pretend that it, it is effective, right? Okay, five minutes out of your day in a hot bath or hot shower. Okay, next thing, wake up, hydrate immediately, if you can, with a pinch of salt, or a squeeze of some lemon and or lime, right? Get some, you're basically making like a Gatorade. You've been asleep for however many hours without uh, hydration and nutrition. So you wanna, uh, right, bodies, however many percentage of water, right? 70%, 75% water, whatever, whatever. Hydrate, take a cold shower, right? It sucks in the beginning when you're first trying it, but I'm telling you, it does something to your physiology. It, it, it starts your day with more energy. Tim Ferriss says, if you win the morning, you win the day. So, you know, you got to ride that lightning right when you get up. Uh, hydration, cold shower, and then two-minute walk, five-minute walk, right? Ten-minute walk. Get some sunlight in your eyes. That's what Andrew Huberman says. He, he says you want forward ambulation. Forward ambulation, that just means walking forward and your eyes are seeing things pa pass by you. This is, this is important for reasons that are deeper than my understanding level and you want sunlight in your eyes. What this does is it starts a timer in your brain that says, okay, I have sunlight now, I'm gonna be tired, right? It's a trigger. You wanna, you wanna uh, um, start this timer by getting the sunlight in your eyes and that's gonna set your whole day up for success, right? Win the morning, win the day. And um, okay, so that takes care of sleep, that takes care of um, hydration, that takes care of sunlight, one, two, three, for movement, so walking for five minutes, you know, you could use a kick trainer for five minutes, RMT rope, take a ball with you, right? Anytime you're walking, you could be dribbling. Um, um, shit, anytime you could be walking, you could be juggling, you know, if you got the skill set, right? Um, so that's movement. And then um, ch -ch 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 -ch, movement, relationships, right? If you're suffering from if you have some self-hatred, self-loathing, if you're, you know, if you're anxious, I've noticed the, the way that I started to cure some personal anxiety and stress was to clean my room and make my bed. If you could do one of those and then do the other, right? So make your bed, two minutes, make the bed, one minute, make the bed, and then another minute, tidy up the room, right? So now where are we, where are we at? Hydration, cold shower, Sunlight movement, right? Five to 10 minute walk. Make your bed, make your bed. Tidy up your room, right? Two minutes. That whole process should take you less, that whole thing, less than 15 minutes, right? So this is the biggest failure of my youth growing up and even into college. I hadn't set this straight, right? They say, Jordan Peterson says, set your room right, set your house right before you criticize the world, right? Because by, by, maximizing the beauty within your home, right? Controlling um, this, the just a little bit can, it almost proves to yourself that you can ch change your life for the better, right? So um, 
it's like the you know this this little bit of you know make make your environment welcoming wel welcoming for you and make it so that you you know you look forward to it and it doesn't look like a freaking pits pigsty and I you know it took me very long to realize why this was important and that cleaning your room is like a reflection of your life right such a simple thing but that creates huge huge benefits okay so now let's go deeper in relationships if you're struggling with something either about yourself or maybe you have a you you you've you've either damaged a relationship or maybe you've destroyed a relationship um you need to write you need to write an apology and you can you can burn it after you can write an apology to yourself you can write an apology to others family friends just write it out and then burn it, right? I think Abraham Lincoln used to write letters and he wouldn't even send them. And writing, what writing does, it helps you clarify your thinking. That's all writing is, clarified thinking. So, um, right, it's just a form of journaling. They say the brain's a good place for coming up with ideas, but a poor place for for for, uh, mem for remembering remembering them and, um, and for storing them. So, you, the more that you can put pen to paper, write down your goals, write down, you know, little things in your day. Uh, I think Ben Franklin used to write pluses and negatives. He would have two columns and he would um, bounce back and forth between the things that, you know, he'd reflect in a day, what he did well and what he could improve on, whether it was interactions, whether it was anything, right? I just know that I think, well, I believe that I know that he did that, but someone can double check that. Um, also planning, like planning wise, planners, daily planner has completely changed my effectiveness as a human and just made me a f more relaxed person, right? Instead of, and you know, they gave us student planners with schedules and I just like, I never really put two and two together that it would actually make me a better soccer player because I could visualize the things that were most important to myself and, and make a plan, make a plan for my day, right? Like even a bad plan is better than no plan, right? I think Mike Tyson says, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face, right? So um, again, a plan is thoughts on paper. So you think, okay, if I have one, if I have one day, if I can only get the most important thing done, right? Try to get the most important thing done before noon. And then, you know, you're off to school, you're off to work, you're off to doing, you know, creating joy for yourself, whatever that may be. So, um, right. That, I think that touches on relation relationships and building the relationship with yourself up a little bit. Um, okay. Unlock your potential. So, so let's rewind to be more, a more effective soccer player, you can start acting professionally by investing your time and energy into those five pillars, right? Because once you set those, this is what An Andrew Huberman says, once you, once you get those, like that's your foundation. If you can strengthen your foundation, Louis Simmons says a, a, a pyramid is only as, as tall as its base. So the wider and thicker your foundation, the more you, you, you unlock yourself and your potential to to create joy in the other aspects of your life, right? These are lessons that I wish that someone would have um, instilled in me when I was much younger, but you know, better late than never. So um, I hope this helps, right? So focus on the five pillars and then you wanna invest in a size one ball, then you want, or, or a size two ball, right? Ideally a smaller ball for, for dribbling. You want to invest in a kick trainer or make a kick trainer yourself. My favorite is the SKLZ solo kick trainer from Amazon, it's 24 bucks. I bring it with me everywhere I go. Um, and the third thing you want to invest in is a, is a RMT rope. You can make it yourself for less than 10 bucks. It's, lo it's a, just a piece of rope longer than you are tall. Ideally, it's softer rope so it doesn't chew up your hands. And just search RMT rope plus David Weck, W-E-C-K. Um, and then you just effortlessly dribble, juggle, and use the kick trainer like every waking moment, right? Muhammad Ali, he would train all day, um, every day, six days a week, shadow boxing, push-ups, 
crunches, heavy bag, speed bag, jumping rope, right? And I'm not saying, you know, you want to be the best soccer player of all time, but little things add up every day. And if you can spend more time training in a relaxed, effortless way, in a way that comes with you everywhere you go, instead of um, kind of like forcing yourself to do like grueling or like tough training, like you want it to be joyful and you want it to be fun, right? Like ideally, you can play with buddies, right? Play, effortless play, that's where all the joy happens. But if that's not available, then effortless play with a kick trainer, juggling, dribbling, those are key. That's going to help you unlock your potential on the field. If you can be relaxed off the field, then you could be relaxed on the field. So give those a try and I hope they help. Uh, reach out with any questions. All right, thank you.